Joining us now is Klaus Spotter, Chief, Global Chief Economist at SockGen. Uh, Klaus, I'm sure you know it too, a thing about humbleness um, uh, among <laughs> Europeans in the face of uh, sovereign downgrades. Look, but, I, but I, I do wonder how much you look at the criticisms of this Fitch rating and just kind of chalk it up to, as, as Ludo kind of said, Amer American bluster versus, um, you know, Fitch actually is, is right with this decision. It makes sense. Where do you stand on it? Well, yes, I think it does make a certain amount of sense. You know, if a country again and again threatens to to go into default because it can't sort out the politics, then I think it's very difficult to maintain a AAA rating. It's as simple as that. You know, public sector debt has, of course, gone up very sharply. Longer term prospects for public sector debt are poor in pretty much all advanced economies and in many, many emerging economies. They're just the credit worthiness is just not that great. And I think it's a kind of a belated move. But uh, frankly, you know, with the history of credit agencies, I have to say, I never look at credit <laughs> ratings. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, their, uh, their view, the public view of credit rating agencies isn't that great at this moment. The timing of this certainly won't help. Um, but when it comes to the fiscal standing of the US with a ballooning fiscal deficit, how much impact will that actually have? We can look and say it's not great but does it spill over into something worse well we haven't seen it yet right I mean bond yields are still pretty low both in nominal and in real terms um, so no I don't think we've seen that yet but it's you know one of those things like current account imbalances this is slightly silly saying you know they don't matter until they matter and when they matter there's pretty much all that matters um, at the moment no I don't think that uh, that markets really are particularly concerned about um, sovereign ratings they are of course concerned about um, defaults going forward in, pub in private companies that's for sure mm. I mean our credit strategists are pretty negative. Hmm. Well, Klaus, in terms of the tone that it sets, I mean, can we fast forward a year from now? I mean, this was one of my my big uh, fun facts of, of the debt standoff that we last went through, which is in about a year, January 1st, 2025, after a presidential election, which is already going to introduce a lot of volatility into both the economy and the markets, you find the debt standoff there again. Is there any way for the U.S. economy to kind of deal with that ahead of time, or is this an inevitability in just 18 short months? Well, I'm not sure because it's completely a political decision, but uh, I find it, you know, peculiar, just like President Biden, I think uh, most previous presidents have argued, um, it's sort of odd that U.S. Congress has to pass spending and revenue bills, and then it has to make a separate decision about whether that's going to be funded. That doesn't strike me as right. Um, I think once you make uh, the decisions and you approve spending and revenue, then you also have to accept without a separate decision the consequences that's going to have for the uh, for debt. I mean, as far as I know, there is no other country that goes through that process. Um, yes, we have, you know, for instance, Germany has a so-called debt break, which is constitutionally insured. There are other countries, Indonesia, which have uh, limits on public sector debt, on public sector deficits, excuse me. But this uh, separation of uh, agreeing on what deficits do and what debt does doesn't strike me as very sensible. Do you think that when it comes to kind of the conversation in the economic sphere specifically in this next year, perhaps ec economic economists, excuse me, and strategists alike may lean more towards Kevin McCarthy's kind of argument that austerity is the only way forward, perhaps using uh, the roadmap that the likes of Germany, for example, has to offer when it comes to the budget? Well, you know, Germany, I mean, these things don't tend to work. You shouldn't, I mean, it's very difficult to run fiscal policy, I think, on rules. Um, because fiscal policy uh, has, in my view, a really, really important and central role in st stabilizing eco economies. And you don't know what kind of shocks are going to come. So I, I'd, be, I'd be very careful about making strict rules which um, you know, might really hinder your ability to manage the economy. Can I go back to this idea of, of private sector debt? What, what are you expecting the default cycle to look like? Well, I mean, economic growth is probably going to slow um, and com continue to be relatively slow. Um, it's going to happen quite late. You see, there's something really interesting that uh, my colleagues were hotly discussing, which is the um, net interest burden on corporates, in the U.S. in particular, has actually gone down. Mm. Because, the, and what's probably behind, and this is a very atypical, of course, because interest rates have gone up, so what's going on here? And, you know, in a way, a lot of companies have turned themselves into something like banks, um, when interest rates were very, very low, they issued a lot of debt at longer-term tenors, even though they didn't necessarily need that money, and so they put it in the bank. 
And now they're still paying super low interest rates on those bonds and they're getting lots and lots of money um, from their deposits. But of course, that's not going to last forever because those bonds are going to mature. I mean, they were, of course, issued at different tenors longer than usual, five, seven years. But uh, that's not going to last forever. So while there might be a delayed reaction, you know, the fact is that one, labor costs are still rising quickly, unit labor costs are rising quickly. Whether the pricing power that companies have enjoyed is going to last forever is an open question, but I don't think it would be outrageous to assume that it's probably going to fade a little bit. Um, and then in the background, you have higher interest rates. So I think it's going to be very difficult. So the default cycle, you know, don't ask, you should ask my, ask my colleagues from the credit strategy um, about the exact uh, default cycle. But uh, yeah, they think that default rates are going to oh, increase sharply. Don't sell yourself short. That was an excellent answer.